Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from the Isle of Man in the UK. This is John and Mike's MMA Corner. Right, firstly, thank you, Jake, for joining me. And uh, Mike's not here uh, simply because he doesn't like you, he said. No, only messing. <laughs> he's, he's on a plane right now uh, to Las Vegas to watch the, the fights. Uh, okay. Yeah, so he's 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 uh, he's on his way now to watch those free bouts. But you're fighting this weekend at Phoenix Fight Night against. I have to admit, I quite like his name. Uh, there's something about something about his name that makes me think he's like a a bullfighter or something. Costello <laughs> Van Steenis. Is that a good That's way? To... Steenis. Yeah. yeah it's, it, I feel like it's a bullfighter or something. It's quite. There's something about like it could be Zorro, you know, with that name. Uh, could be. He's not gonna be, but he can be. <laughs> <laughs> Look. Come on. You're gonna you're gonna actually pop his cherry though at the weekend. That's your goal. I definitely am, mate. Definitely yeah, I'm um, very hungry for this, mate. Very and, hungry. For well, this. I was gonna say because you know your your activity is very specialized. You know, you're, you're picking your fights. You're being careful about uh, when you're fighting due to the fact that you know your records going very. Your fights are going well. You're, you're on a nice little win streak, and yeah. obviously you've got the potential maybe to get that call up for the UFC. So you know a lot of fighters are being very careful about when they time and pick their fights. What was yeah. it about this opponent that made you go yes? Um, do you know what? Stylistically, it matches me very well. Uh, the fact that, you know, he's not really a striker or a wrestler. His striking's okay. I'm not saying it's bad. Like, his striking's still decent. But I feel my striking and my wrestling's better than his. Obviously, he's a jits guy. So, he's kind of like Simeon Thorinson. Yeah. You know, um, who I fought with previous. So, you know, when I look at it like that, I think stylistically it works well I'm going to strike with him I'm going to hit him hard he might try and strike back or try and take me down I wrestling I should defend his takedowns and just keep striking with him I'm not going to be on the floor rolling around you know trying to see who's going to sub who that's not my game everyone knows that that's, that's not what I want to do um, obviously if he gets there my defensive work and I have got the subs there I just choose not to use them so the fact that you know he's not a full on striker but he's hungry for the fight and he's young and he's you know he's hungry mate he's not he's not an idiot like a lot of people think oh he's only had six fights but like he's, he's beat a couple names and he's no mug mate you know he is good and um, he is an up and comer so and, and the fact that he's on a six fight win streak obviously he's unbeaten he's never lost it's like that's big for me also I want to change that you know I want to make him six and one I want to be the person he first lost to you know so for me it's a big fight because of his record and because of who he's beaten, so it's you know, but stylistically for me, it works perfect personally. I, I was going to say, yeah. think we could take me down and sub me, mm. but we'll see. I was about to say the same, mate. You you were right about the guys he's fought. People might say because he only had six fights. He's like, look, he beat very well trained fighters in Avi Jack. He beat him as well, and then he also beat Harry McLean uh, as well. And who, who was yep. hims, who himself was on a I think a, like a three or four fight win streak coming into that fight against the kid. So it's not like yep, he fought. Exactly. Yeah, so he has for guys who have got basically they're like in a way a mold like you with the experience. He's fought guys yeah. of that kind of experience in MMA. So it's not like this is the first fight for him where he's fighting a guy who's more experienced. It's it's something he's done before with less fights. So it's quite it is a well matched up fight. And think about Phoenix Knights of uh, Phoenix Fight Night. Bloody, I keep saying Phoenix Knights. I need to get that out of my system, don't I? <laughs> they, I, I keep getting an image of. Of Peter Kay coming in on a wheelchair with his little vase, <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. But they, that is what it is. I don't know where they came up the name, but they came up the Phoenix Fight Night, and um, I keep there's a promotion as well. It's, it's they've thrown on a couple of good fights of late. You know, they, they, they I think they've kind of went quiet under the radar on the MMA UK scene, but they're, they're getting some really good matchups. Yeah, they like, get really good matchups. You know, Paul Day's fought on the show. You know, some some other big names. Um, it, uh, I just feel that it doesn't get spoken about enough. Maybe they don't do as much PR as yeah. other MMA organisations. Um, so maybe that's why it doesn't get noticed by a lot of people. Yeah, I think um, that's what it is. To be honest, it's down in Bournemouth. It's not exactly close. Mm. Um, so it's you know, I say it's not close. It's close from London. I mean, it's like three hours away. So yeah, at the end of the day, it is a good organisation and they do get good fights on. So and it's a lovely venue as well where, where, where we're fighting. So it is pretty awesome there. I, I I enjoy it when you know you get more than one. You get you get a few promotions around the UK coming out, and like for example this weekend you got you got BCMMA who were just on, and they're they're flourishing. 
all the time. You see, they seem to just get that progression. They got that. They recently streamed via MMA TV and stuff, which I think that MMA TV it's really going to help the exposure of UK based fighters. You know, not even I know you're yeah, established course. yourself, but things like that is really going to help. I think the UK scene just getting the yeah, fights of course, out. Yeah, everyone gets to see it then. You know, if people can't make it to a show or wherever you are around the world or whatnot, you, you can you can you can look in. You know, yeah, it's good. It is, and thing with Team Titan, you got quite a lot of good momentum going at the moment. Yeah, you, you had. I, I have to admit, it looked like an absolute minefield. The heavyweight situation at Banner at the last event. Yeah. But kind of worked out all right, didn't it, for your boy? It did work out, mate. It did work out. Obviously, Shot Austin done really well. Shane back up the other guys like Palou, you know, Marcin. Mm. Um, Bill Bill performed very well. Very happy with Bill. He really stepped up in my books that night. Um, but yeah, again, obviously I was there, obviously cornering Stuart Austin and yeah, he performed well, mate, you know, happy to get the knockout. He didn't really get out of his show in the first round, he didn't really do much. He kind of found, he had to find his rhythm, you know, and then when he did and he landed that shot, mate, and that was it. I, I know, I watched I watched it and I was just like, well, at first day I was thinking, hang on a minute, this isn't a matchup, but do you know what, the, they, they sorted it out in the end, uh, but it's set up because obviously Mark Godbeer can't do the Japan Risen now, because he got an, a neck injury, uh, I think like two weeks ago, so, you know, he'll probably be looking to get back straight in again, and the next card will probably be, potential be Bama, so, you know, Stewart gets a hell of a fight against Mark Godbeer probably. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens, isn't it? You yeah. Know, they, but what happens, happens. You, but then again, until people get phone calls. Well, I was going to say, in 2016, you don't know when Cage Warriors are coming back. Well, maybe I do. Well, maybe you do, but uh, what I'm saying <laughs> is to the general public. No, I, don't, <laughs> I don't really. No. But they will be back next year with a vengeance, I'm sure. So. Well, that's. Well, he's putting the teaser trailers out about finding guys and stuff like this. And. I think as well for yourself. Does when you hear that news, even you know, even you must be buzzing about it. Yeah, it is buzzing. Yeah, they cage warriors. They they always put on a good, uh, a good, a good show. Always, always have done. It run very well. Um, and the fact that Graham, Graham Boylan obviously owns Cage Warriors now and he's my manager. Mm. It's easy. Go okay, Jay, you can part of my show. Yeah, it's like no problem. You know, it's it's, it's perfect. So yeah, it works really well for me. You know. Uh, who knows where I'm going to be in the two, end of 2016 or mid 2016 mm. you know I knock this kid out on Saturday that's on a 10 fight win streak what happens then do I go to a bigger show do I you know who knows I, I do one fight deals and as simple as that so yeah. I'll, be, I'll be kind of free till, till April time keep my time free see what happens see what comes up so um, yeah when Cage Warriors is back I'm sure I'll be on that anyway So, because that was my question I was thinking did you not get offered a chance to go on KSW when they hit London um, I think they did, yes. They wanted me to be a stand-in fighter, though. They wanted uh, me to be um, a, repla- a, a late replacement. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we was like, okay. We, we kind of said yeah to it. Obviously, we wanted to obviously be paid for that, and I don't think they was interested or something. Right. So, uh, we just said, like, no, I don't worry about it, and so yeah. we left it. Yeah, it's not fair. You prepping. anyway in the end, so it doesn't matter. No, no, no. But I was just interested because yeah. you know they, they're taking that. They, they put their dip their fingers in the in the pool, so to speak, and they had a couple of UK guys on the card. And by by all accounts, apparently it, it is a hell of a spectacle that they put on. You know, yeah, it did look amazing, mate. It yeah, amazing. They, he said that they said it was a cross between like Pride and modern day MMA. Yeah. So that that that's, say that, that's, that's about right. That's literally about right. Yeah, perfect. Uh, so I think that's quite. If I, I was quite interested, in it, even then, I, you know, I do. I don't have a go at KSW. What I do is I have a go at some of the matchups, particularly when they have right. Maris, particularly Maris Pusinovsky. Yeah. Because uh, they literally just set up their golden boy, and I'm not saying I was overjoyed when he got his ass handed to him, but I was overjoyed when he got his ass handed to him. <laughs> you know, I think I, I understand he's like a god in Poland. He's an absolute god there. And he is he was a hell of a man. I used to watch him in Strong World's Strongest Man at four, he was a legend. But when it came to uh, when I watched him like when he watched uh, when he beat Hoyler Gracie with that weird overhand punch that looked weird and he just fell down, I kinda went, uh, I'm not too keen on that and then the James Thompson incident and all stuff. You know, it's not often James yeah, Thompson cool. wins, but you know it's the, the there's some little things about it. I think if you just get rid of that bullshit, KSW, you could get yeah. them. They it are. happens though, all shows, all shows kind of have their golden, you know, 
the UFC was kind of what was it Ronda Rousey was she was she like the queen do you know what I mean um, it's, it's hard yeah. to say but yeah they shed legit fights and yeah. obviously the last fight obviously was very legit it so, was very yeah. <laughs> that was called a reality yeah. check <laughs> Jesus mate Holly Holm shone that night mate I just feel Ronda didn't go with her head screwed on I, I believe personally I don't know she didn't look too great at the weigh-ins either compared no. to what she normally does yeah so you know she went in there a little bit too hungry I believe and you know Ronda, Ronda's better than that mate you know we yeah. all, everyone's like all laughing and joking about it but all jokes aside Ronda's very good yeah and she's so much better than the way she thought she just went in there too hungry she did and Holly Holmes yeah. just capitalised on that and just just picked her apart with that straight left really well you know oh so, yeah I said whatever I, it happens yeah. so I said that as well about the left straight. I said that to people. I said the problem with Ronda is was her footwork. Her footwork isn't up to the level that Holly's was, and she kept stepping into Holly's inside leg, which kept opening up for that left straight. I said you can't do that with a southpaw, and that was her downfall. Really, I said those left straights added up, and I said if you take those left straights away, it would have been a, it would have lasted a lot longer. But that those left straights yeah. just picked her apart. They did. Yeah, she did. Holly Holmes did. To, to perform very well yeah very well very timed well timed head kick and everything was just really well down to that so yeah it was but beautiful yeah. yeah it reminded me of the um, the, the head kick because the way it was with Ronda had a back to it and turned around was um, uh, Josh Thompson when he got head kicked uh, was it uh, Eve Jabon was it back in the day um, when he chased after possibly, him possibly I'm trying to think actually I'm not too sure yeah it was back in the day on the UFC when he chased after him because Josh Thompson was fake turn, turn it into him and he got the head kick and then put him down I think that it reminded me of that little incident. I was like, "That's how you time a kick." I said, "You can't time that yeah. any better." Energy was perfect. Got her rocked. Hands were like low. low back. Yeah. Oh, it was beautiful. But look, do you know what? That that shit. You need to have. You need stuff like that to happen in fights because you need the, yeah, the game to change because it it puts everyone's game up a level. I think. Yeah, of course it does. And totally. Yeah. You can't I, just. You, you've been putting your game up as well, though. Uh, you know, you keep you do post you post on um, social media stuff to keep people kind of uh, in touch with what you're doing. And you know, you're working all the time, obviously, on your movement. Yep. You're working a lot on your striking, obviously. And, and yep. you know, because obviously you can only you obviously got to have a ra- well-rounded game. But well, the striking game, you seem to just you seem to going up another level. I've I've been watching. Yeah, my striking's um, escalated quite a lot the last two, three months, to be honest, working a lot of footwork, a lot of head movement, left, right, different angles, orthodox, southpaw, you know, um, my southpaws come on shitloads, mate, so much, and um, and it's good because, at the end of the day, for any reason, I might get a foot injury, I won't mm. go southpaw, yeah. or I just go southpaw anyway, just to mix it up in the fight, I find that my straight left is harder than my straight right, it's crazy, mate, you know, um, but it's because I work on both, and you know, my all-in game, like my wrestling down to my wrestling defense, you know, subs, subs off my back or I've got someone's back or, or whatever, I'm side control, so forth. Um, everything's just going up and it has to, it really has to because you get to that level where it's like, okay, you're coming across a, like a, a an A-star wrestler, mm. you know, out and out, this, that and the other. You know, you got you got to perform, you've got to be ready for that. Mm. So, um, so, yeah, for this fight, it's, my camp's been perfect, you know, it really has been perfect. Um, I literally couldn't ask for anything better the way it's gone even my weight everything's just it's wicked mate really good so very happy with the uh, obviously you say about the, the movement have you went then to do specific training at a boxing club or have you just been sticking with has Mickey been doing it with you Is it, what, what have you done then to improve um, that level with the head movement and angle changes and things like that I'll do with Mickey because um, his striking is a little bit more MMA specific Yeah. so um, obviously with Kieran I do obviously just my straight up normal kind of stuff obviously I still mix it up I still change from orthodox to southpaw but with Mickey it's a little bit different more setups for takedowns you know certain angle changes to defend takedowns and so forth so with Mickey and uh, Kieran they're both they're, little, they're both obviously different mm. but I work well with them both and they both like make me who I am do you mm. know what I mean Yeah. so there's a time I can stand there bite down on my gum shield and I'll lay into you or there's a time when I might go, okay, let's take my time a little bit, a little bit more movement and pick my shots. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So um, when it comes down to a little bit of head, head movement stuff, I, I do with Mickey, to be honest, mate. I don't, I don't really need to go to a, a specific boxing coach. Mm. Mickey's well good enough and so is Kieran. Yeah. They're both, yeah. they're both great coaches, you know, all out striking, down to wrestling. So they're perfect for me. 
Yeah, it's it's interesting because obviously some people do go to like I know Arnold Allen always did boxing. He did a lot of boxing out at a different boxing club down the road and stuff. Obviously now he's up in there, yeah, yeah. he's up in Canada and stuff. But uh, yeah, it's 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 always interesting because you got to be careful with the transition, like you say that it's the the MMA style of striking is different than, for example, pure boxing. So you have because I found that I I used to uh, spar with a, a guy who fought he boxed in the Commonwealth Games in boxing amateur boxing. Okay. And to be fair, we would just do pure boxing, and he would beat the shit out of me. You know, it was just it wouldn't even be out of breath, and I'd just be hanging out trying to catch him, and because footwork yeah, yeah, and movement, yeah. and then we would integrate tape. That's yeah. all he does. Yeah. But then if you dropped him a low kick, then what? Yeah, exactly. So what we you did was I mean? we integrated takedowns as well as part of the the striking. That was it. So we didn't do leg kicks because he didn't have a clue on that side of things. So it was a bit unfair yeah. there because I've just I have a field there, just keep him all day. So we just integrate the takedowns and that's when his game would be open and exposed because that front leg he would rely on that front leg a lot to yeah because put... it's heavy on it yes that's why I'd move the shit out of here yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> trust me so oh, mate. so mate yeah I'd get the takedowns in so like you say it is it is one of them ones where you've got to have that right balance of getting the best of one side of a, a skill set and then getting it into the other side like you say it, it is it is key it is getting that balancing and Hopefully people sure hopefully people get to see a bit of that showcase at the weekend. I won't lie, I don't want a quick knockout, you know, just hold off for a bit and let us see a bit of it. <laughs> Listen, we gotta say this, mate, yeah, like the longer I'm in there, the more of a chance he's got something in that bag <laughs> or I get injured or anything. If I go in there and I ping him and I knock him out, I'm mate, I'm I'm happy. <laughs> um, I'm travelling down. It's okay, we're up in Bournemouth, it's gonna be lively, we're all going out after no 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 problems. Oh, um, right. But yeah, at the end of the day, the fight will be the fight. What will happen will happen. Um, obviously, I'm doing my best to knock him out. Yeah. The quicker I get it done, the, the better. Obviously, I'm not going there hungry for it, as in, you know, I don't go in there swinging. No. I'm still going to fight smart, but I'm really keen on, on getting a finish. I've had a finish in four fights now, mate. It's been too long. So yeah. uh, it'll be nice to stop, to get a stoppage. It is nice to get, yeah, it will be nice. But it shows the, the stand of the guys you're fighting. You're fighting guys who are tough as coffin nails. Yeah. And it's, it's also tests you out as well to show how how much you can go because if you can do it you, can, yeah. you, you keep going those 50 minutes it shows how much you've got on yourself as well so look Jake it's, I can't wait to hear the result uh, I won't be there obviously because I'm stuck here on this little island but I will be no keeping problem. a close eye on social media and I'll be pestering people to keep updated I might even get people to try and send me a video recording or something if they can that'd be awesome that'd be awesome um, yeah I might even just get a periscope on a go or something with someone but look Jake honestly mate have a, have a fucking awesome fight you know have a great weekend thank you so much mate. I really uh, appreciate it I'm really looking forward to it oh, honestly love, I, I love the guys down at Team Titan anyway uh, you know uh, Brad's, yeah. Brad's Brad's are probably the worst of a lot Brad Pickett he's you know if I had to pick one I didn't like you know be him uh, <laughs> but uh, oh, you tell him that <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I'll tell him over the phone uh, <laughs> if, so look Phoenix fight night in Bournemouth Everyone, if you haven't got a ticket, I don't know if there's any tickets available at all, but if you can get down... Uh, you can buy them online now. I've sold, I've sold everything, so... But there's tickets and stuff online. There you go. Get get on there and get down. Uh, get get up, get watching a good bunch of... Uh, UK, get support in UK MMA for a start. That's why I always try to push push out there. You know, support the support oh, the yes. local scene. And, uh, Jake, before you go, watch your social media, buddy, so people can, you know, give you a um, shout-out. My Instagram which I'm trying to use a lot now. So my Instagram is Brutal Boswick, one word. Um, my Twitter, Jake Boswick. My Facebook, Jake Brutal Boswick. Always the same stuff. So, yeah, look me up, follow me, whatnot. And, um, yeah, stay in touch and there you come go. see me uh, explode on Saturday. In the cage, people. In the cage is what in it the, is. In the cage, yeah, yeah, me, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't mean anything rude, but uh, come, watch me, uh, come watch me bang on Saturday in a cage. Day. And we'll be, uh, we'll put the picture up of uh, uh, Jake's uh, um, fight poster, and we'll put the links up for his social media as well on our Facebook page, as always. And uh, buddy, have you got any sponsors? And do you want to give thanks to your coaches? Uh, bad boy, obviously, he sponsored me. You know, they, they, they cover me loads of equipment and my corner stuff. So yeah, massive thank you to Bad Boy, uh, XS Guards. Also, my mouth, my mouth, uh, my mouthpiece. They're always on my case, sorting me out new new mouth guards. So um, yeah, just them two, mate. Um, yeah, awesome. thanks to obviously all my coaches. You know, um, hashtag Fits, my strength conditioning coach, um, my MMA coach, obviously Mickey and Kieran. Obviously, all the boys down at the gyms. Obviously, I train with um, Anton as well, a good friend of mine. You know, he uh, my osteopath. He always helped me out little injuries and stretching me out and doing stuff for me so um, yeah top man for 
for his support as well. Awesome stuff. Jake, like I said, have a great time um, and we will keep a close eye and we'll post the result if we can as well, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, Jake, thanks for coming on Thank again and giving us your time, mate. Time, mate. Thank you.